Day one is officially done at the Vegas GP, and let me give you my thoughts on everything that's happened so far and my honest opinion on what has been a pretty chaotic first day. Hello everyone, welcome back. I would say good morning, but it is 3.15 <laughs> in the afternoon, um, and I woke up at 1 p.m. because FP2 finally started at 2.30 a.m. and ended at 4. Um, and yes, I stayed up and watched it, and also because I couldn't have slept anyway because my hotel is directly next to the track and I could hear the cars going by for an hour and a half. So it was a bit of a chaotic day yesterday. But let me, I want to I wanna back it up. I want to back up the day because everything about the day was great. Vegas was honestly, in my opinion, delivering. It was so fun to walk around the city. It was so fun to like see all the sights. The grandstand I'm at at Ellis Island at Turn 4 incredible the setup there there's the grandstand there's a beer garden it is an incredible setup to watch cars come around turn four got some of my favorite photos I, I maybe ever have taken like ever of cars on track and then fp1 ended after nine minutes now if you've ever been to a race before you know it's a little hard when you're at the track sometimes to know what is going on for example silverstone two years ago i was there when joe crashed we didn't know what had happened for probably over 45 minutes because we can't hear the screens. We can only see what's going on. We know that it's red flagged, but we, you know, you don't really know what's going on. So we're sitting there and, you know, it's red flagged. And then we see that the session is not being resumed and, and none of us have any idea what is going on. We are incredibly confused. And at this point, we don't even know if FP2 is going to be happening because then they're saying, you know, there's 120 some manhole covers we need to check. FP2 might not be happening. So we're hanging out, we're chilling. Finally, at midnight, they announce that, it, like, it sounds pretty likely that it's going to happen at 2 a.m. Um, so we got about two hours to kill. So I went over to the MGM to hang out with Dirk, Pondin, Christina, and Tom. Great times. And literally after I got there, we're all sitting there, we're just kind of chilling, and I get a notification. The FP2 is starting at 2.15 with no fans. They are sending all the workers home. They are sending everyone on track home. They're going to be running cars, but you cannot watch the race or watch the practice. And here's where it gets a little interesting for me because I had been on f one side since, you know, during this whole thing. Like, is it unfortunate that a manhole cover came off? Yes. Has this happened before? Like many times. Baku, Malaysia, multiple tracks, this has happened before. This is not a first. For me, the unacceptable part comes that you are deciding to run cars on the track at 2.30 in the morning for a 90-minute practice till 4 a.m. And there are people that will be there, that will show up to the grandstands. But instead of that, you're, you're not letting them be there. And you're sending police to kick them out of the grandstands. And that, to me, is, is unacceptable. Um, I was completely on, you know, Vegas aside with everything that was going on, the manhole cover, everything. But when they said fans couldn't be in the grandstand for FP2, I was not, I was not the happiest about that. I literally, you know, like I said, I went back to my hotel and I watched it from my room on my laptop and I could hear the cars going by outside. I can't see them, but I could hear them. And there's, there's a lot to discuss with this weekend. There's a lot of people that will find any reason to hate this race weekend. And I think, to be fair, it, it does feel like maybe some of the things have not been prepared well enough. And at the end of the day, you can't, you can't change the manhole cover incident. That happens. That is the world of F1. That is the world of street racing. It has happened before. It's going to happen again. To me, the issue here is that you're going to tell fans that, hey, your tickets are still valid, like you can get you know, food, walk around, hang out, and then two hours later tell them, actually, you can't come on track. You can't come to the grandstands. The only way you're going to see cars on the track is if you are in one of the lucky hotel rooms that happens to overlook the track. And to me, that is completely unacceptable. If the reason they sent staff home was, you know, for safety so they could, you know, sleep and get well rested, I get that. That's great. Maybe that's a sign that cars shouldn't be on track and we should have just canceled FP2 at that point. I know we want drivers to get runnings. It just feels like this decision was made in error. Similarly, Carlos Sainz. 
has a 10 place grid penalty. And they're saying, the stewards are saying there's nothing they can do about it, you know, the rules are the rules. Guys, the rules might be the rules, but like, when you write the rules, you can also make amendments to those rules. And if part of your track explodes upwards into the car and destroys the car, that should be an exception to the rule. I don't know why I'm the one, like, why are all of us realizing this, but the stewards themselves can't realize this. I don't know. At the end of the day, am I still excited for this Vegas race weekend? Yes. Cars are going to be on track in five hours. Yeah, in five hours. I am stoked. FP3 is going to be lit. There are so many fans here that are excited to be here. I was talking to a lot of them yesterday. It was amazing. Quali is going to be awesome. The race tomorrow is going to be great. But the whole thing with not letting the fans on the track for FP2 is going to leave a bitter taste in a lot of people's mouths. Um, at the end of the day, is this what Vegas is going to be remembered for? No, it's going to be remembered for the manhole cover that exploded upward. Let's be honest. That's that's really what it's gonna that's what it's gonna be remembered for. And at the end of the day, if the racing and the quality is good and it's interesting and it's exciting, people people aren't gonna remember what happened during FP1. They will, but they'll laugh about it. But if qualifying's not interesting and the race is not interesting, it's just giving people that already hate this race and want it to fail a little more ammunition. And I'm really hoping, even after everything's happened, I I want people to still give this race a chance. I'm upset. I'm upset that we couldn't watch cars on track last night. I would have loved to sit on the track at 3 a.m. and watch cars go by. It would have been a mind-bogglingly amazing experience. But instead, we had to sit in our hotel rooms and we weren't able to watch it. But I think there's still a lot of fans here. There's still a lot of fans that are super excited for FP3, for Quali, and the race. And at the end of the day, that's all you can hope for. And hopefully after this year, Vegas will make this race a little more accessible some of the prices will be lowered. Um, it'll be, you know, just a little easier for your average F1 fan to get in. Um, because like Daniel said in an interview yesterday, he, he made a great point that he wishes that everyone could get into an F1 race for the cheapest ticket. That no matter like what your job is, that you could at least afford a general admission ticket. And I think Daniel is, is speaking words of wisdom there, you know. At the end of the day, there are exclusive parts about F1 is a sport that some people will never be able to experience because I can't afford a $5,000 paddock club ticket. But at the end of the day, I just want to watch cars on track. And if I can find a cool spot to stand and do that with a general admission ticket, I want to do that. So hopefully, all these little kinks will have been worked out for the future races here. And it'll be a little more affordable so that people can enjoy this race weekend. Because it's fun. It's a great place to be. I'm not a big fan of Vegas. Like, I've never been, like, the biggest, like, oh, let's go hang out party in Vegas. It's been so fun here. The atmosphere is genuinely amazing, and there is nothing like a night race to get you hyped to watch F1 cars on track. So that's it. FP1 and FP2 are done. Quali, FP3 are today. There will be more videos from this race that I'll be doing, but I wanted to get this one out while we're on the race weekend because I felt like it was a lot to talk about, and there was just a lot of emotions and a lot of opinions on... TikTok and Twitter and everything, and just wanted to give you my thoughts on everything that's been going on. Um, but stay tuned. It's going to be a big, big vlog, a big whole weekend overview recap. I will give you my honest, honest opinions on the whole weekend and if I think you should go next year. But that'll be, that'll be sometime next week. So enjoy the race weekend. Enjoy quality. And just, just enjoy the race. Give it a chance. If it sucks, then you can, you can comment here that it's, that it sucks. I don't care. Trash me in the comments of a terrible race. But let's all, let's all give it a chance. Enjoy the race. Go McLaren. Come on, Lando, my boy.